Thank you for sticking around, if sticking around you did. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm Zach, and uh, you're probably not named Zach. I mean, you could be, I guess, but... We have a match for you here, around five. Some players drawn into top eight. Other players have to play it out. We have two players for you that have to play it out. On your left, we got Jared English. Man with whom I'm not that familiar. He's playing Jess Guy. Now, this Jess Guy uh, is more of a control deck. Right? Like some Jess Guy plays Geist of St. Traft. Uh, some Jess Guy like, trims on cryptics. Doesn't play planeswalkers. Um, this Jess Guy does. He has two Teferi, one Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, he has counter spells like Negate and Spell Snare in the main deck. He's definitely taking a more controlling role on the other side of the battlefield. Da 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 da. Benjamin Riley. Now Ben, if you paid attention to Titanium, does not need that much introduction. Ben is an adherent of SRAM. Always has been. He's played Cheerios for a long time. Now, Cheerios uh, is a, one of my favorite decks in modern. I play it sometimes at bigger tournaments. Uh, it's a deck that tries to resolve SRAM, Senior Edificer, or Pure Steel Paladin, both effectively the same. And then play a ton of zero drop equipment. Then plays 20. Loops them all together, generates a high storm count. Mox Opal, retract, do it all again, eventually culminates in a grape shot. So here we see Ben, Hallowed Fountain, Serum Visions, sculpting the draws. This is a deck that only needs one or two lands to operate. So any lands he sees from here on out, he's probably shipping to the bottom. Ben has no creature. Or he has a creature, but he's not going for it. Uh, getting a question. People are drawn into the top eight already. This is a six round event. So the four O's, of which there are three, two of them are able to draw into top eight. So Ben going to play Drago with Jess Guy here. He has to decide how best to go about this. Got a handful of spells. Let's see if he goes for a creature now. I think he's going to. Two mana. SRAM. Must be answered. Logic not. X is two. Ben says okay. Will he go? No, I already played a land bad. Yep, equipment, equipment, opal, pure steel, suit him up. This creature can now tap for any color of mana and has more toughness than the Lightning Bolts, or the Electrolyzes, or the Lightning Helixes uh, can get around. Supreme Verdict, though, will kill that creature. Leaving the door open, though, for Ben to go off. He can go creature into equipment. Let's see if he does it. No, he can just say go. Wow, he is getting flooded. He bottom-bottomed off Serum Visions. And he has to say go. Not looking good for Ben Riley here in game one. Jared English now free to just develop his hand, develop his board, develop his mana. Uh, almost certainly going to find a win here. Ben does not have much to fight uh, in game one, right? He's uh, shooed the paradoxical outcome he used to play. That's no longer in the deck. He has a different sideboard plan, which I'll get to after 
uh, as we go to sideboard here. But really, Ben just drawing super thin. He has six creatures left in his deck, and Jared English has, let's count them, 11, 15, 19, like 20-something answers uh, in his. So it's incredibly unlikely that Ben is going to be able to take this one. Now, I played this deck in Magic Online, uh, as well as at uh, Grand Prix Hartford. And I really leaned heavily on the paradoxical outcomes. Like, you can see why they'd be good here. A at some point, Jared English is going to tap out, thinking that there's no way that Ben can do anything. He's going to be like, all right, end of turn, secure the waste for five. Ben's going to say, okay, well, pick up my four permanents and... Uh, draw four cards and get ready to go off the next turn. Now, that's not a guaranteed go off, but it's at least some game. And Jessica and Jund um, are why you play Paradoxical. So now we're going to play Drago for a while. There's Jared. Flip in the background buying cards. Come sell your cards to flip. Let me get the round time correct for you guys. There it is. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I got a phone call. I'm like, man, my phone is on do not disturb. Why is it making noise? Anyways, we're at the point now in this game where uh, lightning helixes are being pointed at the face. Jared just has so much interaction uh, that he can afford to point some of it at Ben Riley's dome piece. Ben Riley at 16. English at 17. And to turn Bolt, Bennett 10, Snapcaster Bolt. This is about to be over here. Uh, he looks even better. Untap draw. You know what? I'm just going to reset these life tolls to 20 because it's over, baby. Ben Riley playing it out for camera time here. Ben! Scoop, dude! Ben! Like, if you finish this round soon enough, you can go get food, Ben. Come on, dude. What you thinking? Snapcaster scoop. There we go. Ooh, 
Now we go to sideboards here. Now this is what I wanted to talk about. Because Ben has changed it up. Um, back when I was playing the deck, like I was saying, leaned pretty heavily on Paradoxical Outcome as the way to beat the grindy decks. Uh, no longer the case. Four mana is a ton of mana. Instead of trying to out-control the decks that are much better at it than you are, what Ben decided to do, which I love, I would have never thought of it, uh, which is why he's the man who thinks about the deck a lot, he's the one who designed the deck, uh, at least iterated it to where it is now. What he's doing is playing one Godless Shrine to fetch up with his uh, eight fetch lands, so nine black sources, and three Claim to Fame. Now this is for the aftermath part of Claim to Fame. This is return a creature from your, or no, excuse me, from the main part of Claim to Fame. One black mana, unearth, return a creature from your graveyard to play. It's a sorcery. But that's one mana. So, better against the decks that thought sees you, of course, but good against these two. Because, you know, you go uh, turn to SRAM, they go spell snare. You go, okay, untap, silence you, claim to fame. For one mana, you can return a creature. Effectively, uh, at least verse cards that kill or counter your creatures, not path to exile. It's creatures number 9, 10, and 11. So that's what Ben has. He'll be uh, trimming some equipment. He'll be trimming a repeal, maybe a noxious revival because it's card disadvantage. So that's Ben's plan. Jared English, on the other hand, has a different plan. He's not trying to side in one mana cards that just win the game. He's trying to counter everything his opponents do. Right? He'll have an engineered explosives. Uh, he'll have ruined Halo if he wants it. Ceremonious if he wants it. That's a that's a niche case niche case, but at least it costs one. Countering a crucial Mox Opal can be everything. Uh, he'll have Sony Silence if he wants it. Wear Tear if he wants it. Vendillion Disdain. No, Disdainful's not good, but just a lot of cheaper answers. And he can side out things like uh, his Secure the Wastes, his uh, some of his more expensive cards like Supreme Verdict to Fairy Jace. The only thing that matters for Jared is controlling this game. So this is perfect for Jared on the draw. He had one spell snare in his deck, and he had it on the draw against the two drop deck. So very, very crucial. Otherwise, he was drawing to only Bolt and Path, which, you know, there are seven of them. But Path accelerates Ben, uh, and Bolt there are only three of. And would he'd need to shock, he'd need to fetch a red source. So spell snare, definitely the one you want here. So let's see if Ben can present two more threats. Upkeep. He says Noxious Survival Sram. Then at 17, he's going to make Jared have another answer. Sram. Spider Silk. Draw. Paradise. Draw. Paradise. Draw. It appears... 
that Jared has no spell here. This is kind of amazing. I'm so surprised that Jared didn't have one of his many points of interaction. So Paradise Mantle suited up on the SRAM. Ben now with a backup SRAM. As well as a silence. Jared with nothing in sight. No bolt. Helix uncastable. No path. No logic knot. So we'll see what Jared can say here. Helix. And this was a huge mistake from Jared. Uh, fetching a basic island off that first flooded strand might have cost him this game. See if Ben can present more threats here. Three mana. Aether Grid. Huge play from Ben. Now he can passively tick at Jared's life total and make Jared have the first move. Ben says ping you down to 17. On tap. Now it's tough for Ben. He has to really be careful of Cryptic Command here. He does not want to walk into a Cryptic. Cryptic is going to have to bounce Gepper Aether Grid at some point anyway. So if I'm Ben, I'm thinking, why would I just walk into Cryptic Command when I can just say go, make him effectively waste four mana keeping Cryptic up, and whittle him down? you for two, Ben says. Down to 15. If Ben had one more artifact, this would be a much quicker clock. So in response to a silence, cryptic counters, bounces. Then of course drops Jared to 13 response. And here Ben's gonna go. Will he play a SRAM or will he replay Aether Grid? So I kill redeploy the Aether Grid. The silence barely did anything there. Jared develops his mana, says go. Ben would love to have one more artifact in play. But again, it's like, do you want to walk into Cryptic Command? With one Cryptic down, Ben decides now is the time. I gotta say, I disagree. Jared has three Cryptics left, as well as Snapcaster Mages. So, like, there's just no way. Wow, but he doesn't have it. So Ben does get one card off of his equipment. Four tokens made for Jared. Three of these are going to die. Jared, clearly on the back foot here, this Aether Grid is not something that he expected. It's kind of unlikely that he sided into wear tear. 
So three tokens down. Ben does take one. He's at 13. So 13 each are the life totals here. Looks like Jared has three cards in his hand. So even if they're all burn spells, that still leaves Ben Riley at a very healthy four life. No Celestial Colonnade. SRAM number three. Equipment. Draw, it resolves. Equipment. Draw. Equipment. Draw. Will then fully go for the retract here. He has four pings available. He says, ping you four times. Nine life is Jared English. Retract resolves. Now it's clear that Jared English has F6. This should be the game. Ben Riley just needs to find another retract or a critical mass of equipment. He says, wait, I haven't played a land this turn, right? Ben thinned his deck for one planes. Now he's just trying to go off here. He said, all right, I think you're dead, dude. Let's ping you down to seven. Grape shot. Oh, echoing truth. All four copies of Spider Silk Net. Okay. Gotta say, I've never seen Echoing Truth bounce four spider silk nets. <laughs> That's absurd. Modern is awesome. <laughs> oh, I love this deck. Echoing Truth bounce four copies of spider silk net. <laughs> And there's the scoop. Jared finds the line of conceding. So congratulations to Ben winning against the tough matchup. He is able to force a game three, which is not easy to do against Jess Guy, I gotta say. It's not quite the worst matchup for this Cheerios deck. That's Jund. Jund definitely the worst matchup. They have discard. They have one mana kill. And then they have Liliana of the Veil. That's the only thing that makes Jun much worse, right? They have Liliana to make you sack a creature. Uh, as well as uh, make it to your game plan of like build up resources and then go for it. This does nothing. And then even if you land an Aether Grid, which is good against Jeskai and bad against Jun. Uh, they're just going to Liliana ult you and say, okay, all your uh, your Aether Grid and your lands versus your artifacts. What do you want to keep? And you're left with nothing. Yeah, you got another 10. But they're left with nothing. <clears throat> so these players go to game three. 
I didn't see Ben Riley draw the claim to fame at all. It's possible he only wants it against uh, the black decks. I'm not sure. Because Path to Exile is so good when matched up with Claim to Fame. <clears throat> what the? Did my round timer get paused again? How did that happen? There we go. 25 minutes left for these players to finish a game three. And here we go. We're going to see what each player can do. Jared keeps seven. Ben sends it back for six. Unfortunate part about Cheerios is that it does mulligan a decent amount. Any hand without a creature is just really hard to keep. Here we go, Ben Riley. Oh, did he, did he draw seven? <laughs> I hope for his sake this doesn't result in a mold of five. Because he did, clearly he did catch it himself here. Okay, so it looks like the penalty assessed might be that Jared English gets to thought seize Ben Riley here. Then Ben Riley gets to make his mulligan decision, which is so unfortunate, right? Okay, shuffled back in, not thought seized. Uh, so Ben keeps the hand, it looks like. This is a keepable hand, um, but without silence. Jared gets perfect information as to what Ben has. Unfortunate for him, but when you accidentally draw seven cards, there is a penalty. So Ben will keep, Ben will scry, and Ben will keep on top. Serum Visions from Jared. He's going to be met with a Serum Visions from Ben, unless his hand has drastically changed with that one card. He did kill turn one previously in this event. But I don't see it happening with that hand of his. Oh my god, is he going for it? Ah, look at this. He goes pure steel, equip, equip, go. Now if Jared, for his removal, if he's leaning on anything but path, this will not work. And look at that, Steam Vents tapped. Then attacks for two. He now has three mana, he can resolve an Aether Grid here. 
And all of a sudden, Ben goes from his turn one, zero permanents, up to five permanents, doing his best affinity impersonation. Wow. He's already going to start the clock. Then forgets a ping. Hopefully that won't be the difference maker for him. Does the honorable thing. Doesn't try to uh, ask for takesies backsies here. He just goes to his turn. Admits he made a mistake. He'll see your missions. Looking for any equipment here. Important to note, Jared English without white sources. He plays a ton in his deck, but right now he just does not have any. Spider Silk Net. Draw a card. Silk net. Draw a card. And says go. Get Aether Grid up to two damage a turn here. And shared English without a white source in sight. Here is a silence. That is a pre-combat silence. This must mean that Ben Riley is going for a retract here. Retract. Looking good for Ben Riley. It is possible for him to miss here, but unlikely. the mana. Jared just making sure that Ben has enough mana to do everything he needs to do, and it looks legitimate to me. So Sram comes out. Ben is out of mana, but is very likely to find a Mox Opal. Draws two. Draws two. Jared down to 12. Almost certainly going to result in a win here. Then going to pick up five artifacts. Draw eight more cards. Do it all again. Yep, here we go. Storm count a million. Hell of a mold of six, wasn't it? Yeah, here we go. Ben just playing with himself at this point. He is just really enjoying himself here. He says, ping you for five. At this point, Ben will probably start drawing less cards. Uh, there's the handshake, though. No need. Jared English does scoop it up. I'm sorry, Jared. That was rough, man. That was rough. The fact that Jared had no white source. Look at that. We're going to get to see his opener here. And yeah, it looks like a pretty reasonable keep to me. He had two of his three islands. Any lands that he draws except one island, two Field of Ruin, allow him to start casting spells. He kept a risky hand, and it didn't work out for him. No white source for the two Path to Exiles. Uh, I think needless to say, if he even had any white source, if he had a shock land that dealt him 10 damage when it came into play, he would have won that game easily. Really unfortunate for him there. We see Ben Riley's sideboard play on two grid, two truth, two silence. Mm. 
well done. Ben Riley. Moves on to four and one, likely makes top eight. So looking at who uh, was live for top eight going into this round, uh, that's something we can definitely do here. As Ben Riley signs a slip, he'll bring it up. Moving uh, 4-0 going into this round where Keith Wrong, Edgar Hinton, Adam Snook, two of those players could draw. One of those players couldn't. The player that couldn't draw was Ed Hinton, TJ's regular superstar team member, whatever you want to call him. I call him way less polite words off camera, but I'm not going to call him those right now. <coughs> son of a <coughs> son of a bitch. Um, not going to do that because that, that's, just, that's just rude. Especially if he was standing right there, that'd be even ruder. Not going to do that. So Ed Hinton, 5-0. and Keith Wrong and Adam Snook, 4-0-1. All three of those players, certainly in top eight, even with a loss the last round. <coughs> The three and ones, huge number of three and ones, though. Uh, and I'll go through them. Sean Haverty, ad nauseum. Ryan Leverone, hardened scales. Don't know what Michael Rapp was playing. Uh, ben Riley Cheerios, he won. We'll see him in top eight unless he gets a pair down. John Orr, not sure what he was playing. Noah was playing the Protean Hulk deck. We'll really hope that gets in. Sam Labossiere, Humans. Arnie Kester, I assume, is playing Burn, but I'm, if it was Legacy, I'd know for sure he's playing Burn. At 3 1 here, I'm not sure what he was playing. Uh, Dean Champagne, for sure, on Jess Guy, always is. Not sure about Aaron or Gorman. Uh, Jared English, we just saw lose. And. Beyond that, not really sure. So we have a really diverse potential top eight. Right? I don't know what actually won and what actually lost yet. But I do know what is absolutely in top eight. Uh, and those are four decks. Keith Wrong playing Hollow One. Edgar Hinton playing Green Tron. Uh, Snook playing Humans. And uh, Ben Riley playing Cheerio. So, three very popular modern decks, right? Humans, Hollow, and Tron. You expect to see at the top of the field almost anywhere. Uh, Cheerios. Only you'll see at the you'll see at the top of the field only here at T-Face. Not exactly a world beater. Thanks, sir. Those of you who just joined us this last match, appreciate you. Uh, electrical longboard, that's... I don't know why you need an electrical longboard. Like, gravity should be enough. Maybe not. MTG Lord Tom, thank you. S Snapples, you too. Those guys who've been here for a while. I know, uh... Banana Man, you've been here all day. Commander Root all day. Bloodlust. Ludicus off and on. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, doesn't take much to help support us, right? The view helps. Hit the follow button. That helps. That's one way Twitch judges us. Uh, you know how when you go to Twitch and you see, you know, the streams in order, the, the top stream will always be the one with the most viewers. Second one, usually second most. But then when you get to like third, fourth, fifth, sometimes it's like, uh, someone with 500 viewers will be above someone with a thousand viewers and you might not know why part of that is because it goes by subscriber and follower count too those are factored in when it lists them and ranks them so even just by simply following us uh, the smallest possible thing you can do on Twitch so you, you know when we're live and maybe you click through maybe you don't but that means a lot um, even that simplest thing like that so please do Please do follow us. Really appreciate it. That would be uh, 
the easiest thing. Uh, people who are hosting us, we want to give them a shout out. One with nothing. And uh, Stream LFG, really appreciate you two for hosting us. Even if the host is only a few viewers, we really appreciate it. It's not like we have a ton. So, thank you for that. So, as we move on to top eight, right, we, um, you know, we still have one round until top eight. And hopefully we're going to get a, uh, a match that actually matters for top eight. What, what do y'all want to see? Right, because we have uh, Hollow on Tron, Humans, Cheerios, and then maybe a smattering of other ones. Uh, what, what do you want? Guys, I gotta say, y'all are really not active enough in this chat. Who the hell am I supposed to talk to? Who can play at that game? I can just sit here and not talk to. Except my bluff is callable. <laughs> because I'm gonna talk and you know I'm gonna talk. I'm I, bald and I smell. Snook, I know you're in this room. I'm gonna. Come hit you, dude. Where are you? All right, I'm gonna turn the camera. Watch me give this guy a beat down. Hold on. Hold that thought, guys. Just will not stand. You're lucky, buddy. You're lucky you're upstairs right now. But look, you're going to have to come down eventually to intentionally draw. And I got a camera and a microphone. I can move any which way. Limited only by my cord length, so come on over. Do it. I dare you to do it. You have to come back soon. to come back soon you're at Dunkin Donuts getting coffee look if you get me a coffee all is forgiven okay just gotta get me a coffee uh, iced hazelnut cream only and do not spit in it <laughs> I can't handle that See who else we got in the chat here. Oh, all the same people. Go figure. 
Y'all non-talkers. Snook, I'm going to fight you. Go back to Duncan. There's still five minutes left on the clock. All right. To the business at hand here. Things that you could do right now to help us, to help me, to make me shut up about it. Okay, you could hit the follow button, uh, which no one has done since I asked you to do it. There are like 15 or 20 people here. One of you has to hit that follow button, okay? Please, thank you. You do that, you could go to YouTube and view our videos or subscribe. TJ Titanium Series. That would be a big help. I always upload the videos from the previous day's tournaments the next day or at the latest Monday. Sometimes it's Monday because I'm a busy slash lazy boy sometimes. You can do that. You can subscribe to that. You could go to Facebook and uh, follow the channel. That way when we post information about upcoming titaniums, you understand, you know. When we do go live on Twitch, I'll make a post on Facebook saying that, hey, we're going live in an hour. So that you know when the tournaments are happening, please do that. TJ Collectibles Titanium Series. Should pop it up. The logo's a big TJ. Should be pretty obvious. And still no one has followed, so come on. I'm looking at you, stay hydrated bot. If that is your real name. Our uh, Twitter is fairly defunct, but I'm looking at uh, re -un re starting that, using that again. Got to reset the password. Um, that's just TJ Collectibles. So please do that. Two, really any of those things? I would most appreciate, like, the follow on Twitch and the Facebook. But any of those, right? If you're a YouTube guy or girl, subscribe to YouTube. Please. You don't have to, like, watch every video. There are some good ones that I'd recommend. Some of our interviews were awesome. Yeah, I'm going to recommend one to you. It's all sorted into playlists, too, so uh, if you want to see, you know, you want to go back to, like, last October and watch, you can. If you have a friend who plays in these, you can go watch them win. Like, if you're a Mike Ferguson fan, I know there probably are a lot of them out there. Strangely popular guy, despite being such a curmudgeon. You could go back to, like, uh, the Titanium Qualifiers playlist and go okay i'm gonna watch the finals evan whitehouse versus mike ferguson blue red through the breach blood moon versus eldrazi tron this was an awesome match where mike ferguson hard cast emrakul pretty sweet madcap into platinum imperium this, this is versus dredge he hard cast emrakul versus dredge so if you don't want to see that, you're crazy. All right. Any of these things would help a lot. And look, if I refresh this page and no one's followed yet, uh, I'm leaving, so. Yes, someone followed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, do I have to get on my knees for this? Do I have to beg for this? I guess I do. Whoever you were, let me know in the chat, all right? So I can praise you. Now I can move on to my shilling of other things. Yeah. I can go, yeah, look, guys, maybe you didn't know. Read that. Titanium plus 10K, $10,000 cash money tournament. Is occurring on October 20th. That's pretty soon. 
That's pretty soon, guys. The DCU Center in Worcester. Look, it's not even written. Worcester. Worcester. Worcester, kid. Modern. Starts at 10 a.m. Doors open at 9 a.m. Winner gets $3,000. Also has a legacy side event at noon. $10 booster drafts. Anything on demand that you want us to do, we'll do, of course. So come on by and find the event on Facebook. Titanium 10K. Our first 10K ever. Please don't let us lose $5,000 on it. Come to the event. There'll be vendors and cards and prizes and money and people to trade with. And me and Snook commentating. Sweet. Yeah, that's right. Snook didn't get me a coffee. He's a son of a bitch. Okay, I see him. I see him. Hold on. I'll be back. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed that. It was a totally serious, super, super hard arm punches there. Really, uh, really serious business. <sighs> he did let me have a sip of his coffee. That's something, I guess. Not nothing. Alright, there we go, y'all. There, Here are the standings. Judge Zach should be coming over to me soon with standings and pairings, and we are gonna pick one for the last round. Here he is right now. Thank you, sir. Have I said happy birthday today? You have not. Thank you for doing so. Judge Sam, happy birthday. I, Thank you. You couldn't have picked a better place to be. That's right. <laughs> All right. So these guys are in. They're going to draw. These four tables have to play it out. Okay, good, guys. We got four tables that have to play. So let's go with Dean and Matt. Table six. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. MTG Lord Tom, thank you. You would have gotten me a coffee. Appreciate that. You know how many coffees I've gotten him? It's not zero. I'll say that.
Okay. So, we have a match for you. Okay. Two players that won last round. They are 4-1, uh, but have to play it out. Uh, Dean Champagne and Mike Matt Fastman, both bad tie breaks. So, they will have to play. No option of drawing. If they do, it would be a big mistake, and they probably both miss. They're both pretty smart players, so I doubt that's going to happen. So, Dean and Matt. Dean uh, always plays Jeskai, and Matt we will find out in just a sec. Okay. Oh, I was wrong. All right, as I usually am. But Dean Champagne, not playing Jeskai, switched to Primeval Titan. So, Primetime versus Matt Fastman, who is the one and only Kirk Clan Ironworks player in this tournament. So we have a combo deck versus a combo deck. Pretty cool. KCI versus Amulet. So let me update this info for you here. As we get ready for these players to come sit down. Thank you. Okay. Yep, so basically the way that the standings broke everybody, it was uh, 10 players in contention, three of which are locked. I mean, you guys know how this works if you've been here before. Three of which are locked, three or four of which are most likely locked, and like three or four that have to play it out. So the players uh, with the bad tie breaks that have to play it out, Matt Fassman, Dean Champagne, most likely Sam Labassiere and Aaron Gorman, but who knows? They might choose to draw and flip the coin. Not sure. Let's see. The players should be making their way to the feature real soon. But it could be that they're just drawing because they're not really moving over here. I think drawing would be a big mistake. Ah, uh, but they might roll the dice that their tiebreakers improved by 5%, which is not unheard of in a six-round tournament. It can happen. If I were uh, a player confident in my combo deck, I'd just play. We're going to give Judge Sam a pass on that one. It's his birthday, so not going to talk crap about him. Forgot to announce the feature. That's all right. He's a pretty good guy. So Dean Champagne, I am familiar with. He plays all the TJ's events. Uh, TJ's stream member, sponsored stream member. Always had a foil that Jess guy deck in the past. I'll be interested to see how foiled his uh, his amulet deck is if he's already bought or traded for uh, for amulet foils. That'd be pretty impressive. They're pretty. They're quite expensive. I'll tell you one thing about him though. He has no idea how to spell primeval. He literally just put the word prime then the word evil. Or am I just wrong? And that's how you spell it. Okay, good. I'm not going crazy. That's not how you spell it. <laughs> thought I was thought I was about to look really stupid. Alright, there we go. Got the uh, info updated there for y'all. That's Matt on the left. Matt's a player I know almost nothing about. Dean, I know. I've talked to. I've talked to about magic, about not magic. Uh, commentated on quite a few of his matches with his Jessica deck. Matt Fassman, though, a newcomer to me. 
me see if I can't figure out something about him here. Good old Facebook stalking. Funny how that works. Looks like a player from Boston. All right. Good for you, Matt. Thanks for coming to our tournament. Really appreciate that. I'm gonna try and get Matt into the booth if he wins, talk about KCI a little bit because I saw him playing earlier uh, with his pimped out KCI deck, all foil, all promo. And it was pretty clear that he knew how to play it. So here we go, Citadel, Sphere. Even the Invasion Foil Chromatic Sphere. Wow, those are expensive. Here's Dean on your right. So combo versus combo, here we go. Mindstone would be ideal. Icker Wellspring, also okay. But Dean has one of his best draws. Right, he's got Amulet. Let's see if he can follow this up with an Azusa. Bounce Land Azusa would be one of his many nut draws. Even if he has the Summoner's Pack for, for an Azusa, it'd probably be, be worth it in this matchup. You're just going for pure speed. Well, Colony Garden, that's the best he has. All right. Really pretty unlucky for him that he doesn't have Bounce Land there. His deck plays something like 12 of them. Let's see what he can do with two mana. Explore. Okay. Redraw to Bounce Land. There we go. He's found one. Nice. Picks up Colony Garden. Matt Fassman ready with the floating mana. He's had to do this all day, represent how much mana is floating. And he is kind enough to do it for Dean. Got one blue mana, going to play another amulet. And that's a pretty good turn three for Dean. So long as he has a bounce land, he might be setting up for a turn three kill here. We got some big nasty dice we've used for floating mana for these guys. Do cool. Like that? Oh, do we have? Um, yeah, we have another big, big ass deep. Oh, is that an engineered explosives? Oh my god. That is a key card here for Matt Fassman. That ensures that he will not die on his next turn. Yep, there we go. And Dean was not playing around the engineered explosives. He had a floating mana. So he said, oh, I might as well use my floating mana to play Amulet. Perhaps not familiar with the KCI amulet matchup. Because if we think about it, as long as he had another bounce land, he had one mana to spare for that amulet this next turn. Azusa. Wow, Azusa, one land, go. Ouch! Rough beats, Dean. Kicker. Explore. I mean, Dean, Dean has to be happy that he wasn't straight up dead on turn four here.
No Kirkland Ironworks for Matt. But what can Dean do? Still one mana away from a Primeval Titan, even. Could have pacted for a Rex Sage there, but that does absolutely nothing. Matt wants those artifacts in the graveyard. Twenty-one from Inventor's Fair. Let's see what he has. Ancient Stirrings would be good. Uh, but at the very worst, what he's doing, as we can see, four mana, Inventor's Fair. Setting up for a win next turn. He would almost certainly get it if he fetched a Kirk Clan Ironworks. We got a Fastman fan in the house here. XZ, I'm unfamiliar with him. How do you know him? As we see Fastman fetching it up during the main phase. Playing around, not sure what, but maybe playing around something here. Now, if if you're Dean, you have to know you're dead next turn. You can either go Talaria West for uh, for a pack negation. You can potentially use an engineered explosives on a key number uh, to prevent Matt from having a bunch of mana, but that doesn't seem very likely to work. Pactum negation, his best bet. I mean, prime time is good and all, but like, you're just gonna lose if you tap out for prime time here, I think. And it's pretty clear that Dean knows it. No Talaria West, no ancient stirrings to search for Talaria West. No amulet to get something like a couple ghost quarters and uh, try and stunt Fastman's mana. That won't work. Now, I suppose he does have more land drops from Azusa, right? So, there might be a way that he can do this if he can somehow generate enough mana. But I'm not sure how he's going to do it. All right, Bajuka Bog. That's something. Clear the graveyard a little bit. In Slayer Stronghold setup for next turn. All right, so Dean settles on Bajukabog. That's the best he can do, which, if I know KCI, is not going to be enough. But we'll see. KCI fizzles once in a while, it has before. Dean gets in for an extremely important one point of damage. <laughs> and he says, go. Really, all the, all the amulet draws we've seen today have just been kind of unfortunate in terms of, like, how well they've drawn. We saw Nick Starr in round one draw terribly. And we see Dean here. I mean, he drew well with his two amulets, but something so simple as not drawing a single... Uh, Talaria West is just the deal maker in this game. All right, here we go. Engineered Sack for Mana. Let's 
Sacramento. See, this is great for me because I get to learn about more about KCI too. My eyes usually just glaze over when they're comboing off against me, but in this case, I have to pay attention. So here we go, three mount scrap trawler. Sack, wellspring, return engineer. Engineer, sack. Yeah, I, I, I've seen people concentrate plenty in magic. Let's watch Dean's face. As he gets comboed here. Yeah, look at that hand. All right, that's good. That's good. Hard to lose from this point, I'd imagine. So Mike says, all right, or excuse me, Matt, my fault. He says, I'm going to pay the cost for this chromatic star activation by sacking three artifacts, which is completely ridiculous that that's legal, but that's going to be how that works. So he's going to draw a card from the star. He's going to get many scrap trawler triggers. He's going to get a mirror retriever trigger. So mirror retriever will certainly target scrap trawler. Scrap Trawler will target Mirror Retriever. Mirror Retriever will target Star. Star will target Engineer. This is a loop. This costs six mana, but generates eight, as well as draws a card. So he has inf an infinite amount of mana and an infinite amount of cards. He's demonstrated this loop. And from here on, he's going to draw his deck, or at least draw that much of his deck. Mox Opal. High right spell bomb. An infinite number of activations of Pyrite spell bomb. As far as KCI loops go, that's a pretty simple one. Even I could follow that one. See, I don't like to make an arbitrarily large amount of mana. Uh, I like to make seven mana with three lands before form of Urzatron. I like going like uh, Urzaland, go Urzaland, Simic Signet, Urzaland, like something that costs eight, like Sundering Titan. That's what I like to do. Now we go to sideboarding as the TJ's crew rolls in. It's like from the Dallas store. We have uh, Noah Ansberger rolling in with his footsteps of the Goryeo deck. He top aided. Ed Hinton, he top aided. Ben Riley, he top aided. So, XZ, your friend Matt is up a game. Trying to top eight the hard way. Not like playing eight games like Adam Snook just won eight games in a row and top aided, double drew. But he has to win 12 games. He has to do it in a much harder way. The good news is if he does, he will be the first seed and have to play every match with this KCI deck. So going ahead to sideboarding, like I said, Dean is on the draw. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dean is on the play, my fault. Dean's back is to the wall. He has in his board three spell pierce. Uh, three Abrade, which, you know, is probably good enough, but not really, not really what you want to be doing. He has an Engineered, which, you know, might be okay. He has a Rurik Thar, which if it resolves should just be game over, straight up game over. Uh, more so than prime time is. If he had a Rurik Thar in his main deck for that game one, it would have been a GG. There would definitely be no way that Matt Fassman can beat that in the first game. 
he has relics, which are certainly good enough. And another Rex Sage, which probably is better than some card in the deck. Even like Rex Sage tag a chromatic sphere. Rex Sage tag a Moxel, but that's fine. Sometimes that's good enough. So Dean has a lot of cards. He'll be boarding out uh, the Walking Ballista. He'll be boarding out some of his slower cards, maybe. I'm not sure what's least important for him. He can probably board out a prime time or two since Rurik Thar and Four Summoners Packs is like good enough. Resolving Rurik Thar should just be game. Uh, since Dean doesn't have a single answer to Rurik Thar, his quote answer is uh, Worm Coil Engine. You play the Worm Coil and Rurik Thar must attack into it, I guess. But that's a one of unlikely to happen. Unlikely that uh, Matt sides it in. So Matt has four Nature's Claim if he wants to fight against the Amulet portion of the deck. He has Galv Blast, Lightning Bolt, Aether Grid. These are not really what he wants to be doing. Defense Grid, Guttural Response, no. Silence. Silence is probably good enough to be in the deck, right? Like, at the very worst... You can just go, okay, uh, amulet trigger on the stack on Dean's big turn, silence you. That's pretty good. But this deck is hard to know what to cut. It is. Dean on the play this match. Okay, Matt going back to the well. See him shuffling up, looking for six new cards. KCI is not necessarily the type of deck where you have to draw your namesake, right? You have Chromatic Spheres, you have Chromatic Stars, you have Terrarian, you have Pyrite to draw, you have Icar Wellspring to draw, Mindstone to draw, Ancient Stirrings. Uh, the deck is incredibly consistent, and unlike some combo decks, like, say, Noah's, who's in the top eight, with his Protean Hulk deck, if you don't draw Protean Hulk, well, your deck kind of sucks. It's, like, hard to just find that card. But in this KCI deck, all the cards cycle. Dean Ancient Stirrings finds a Growth Chamber. Engineered for one. Matt Fassman proactively getting on the board here. He knows the amulet is like a full on time walk uh, in this amulet deck. I mean, hell, the deck's named Amulet Titan, so pretty important. This Kurt Tribe Scout presents a one mana threat. Uh, Dean says, okay, buddy. You have the Engineered. It's going to get a permanent. Let's see if you want to get this permanent. Fastman mocks Opal Go. He does not take the bait. He lets the Sakura Tribe Scout live. One blue floating for Dean as he ancient stirrings. What does he want? Certainly doesn't find an amulet. That is, that would be the ideal find. Cruel turf gonna have to be good enough. Like I said in sideboarding, 
Dean just needs to resolve Rurik Thar. That is the only thing that he has to do this game, and it should be over. Right, because it's possible that uh, that map route and worm coil, it's possible, but it's a one of, and he has to draw it or spend effectively five mana tutoring for it with Inventor's Fair. Seems unlikely. End of turn, engineered. And the coast is clear for Matt Fastman. He is tapped out his opponent. If he has Darksteel Citadel and KCI, he can attempt it. But he mulled the six. And Darksteel Citadel, only a four of. He does not have it. He has Buried Ruin. Buried Ruin allows him to sack it and get an artifact back from his graveyard. Here we go. Dean gets a chance at it. Dean with Pactum Negation in hand. So he is protected. That was his key turn. If Matt went off that turn, there was nothing Dean can do. But now that Dean has five mana... That should be good enough for him. If you are just joining us, this is game two of round six here. This is the last round of Swiss. The winner moves on to top eight. The loser gets an attaboy. Not trades engineered for amulet. That's fine. There it is. There's the naturally drawn Rurik Thar, and that should just be game. Matt Fastman, let's take a look at him here as he contemplates his fate. Poor bastard. <laughs> hey, yeah. He says, oh, okay. Okay, I scoop. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it for the game right there. Uh, this is why I say, I mean, I can only imagine the number of matches in which you side out Primeval Titan is incredibly low. But in this matchup, where Rurik Thar straight up wins, like, we saw it right there, Rurik Thar... Dean played Rurik Thar, and Matt straight up scooped. That was it. There was nothing he could do. And yeah, Matt can go back to his sideboard, side in his one Worm Coil engine, uh, to tutor four with Inventor's Fair, but, I mean, it's really not, not where you want to be. That's why I would say side out some number of prime times, so I got like one to two prime times, you still have four summoners packed to fetch them. If if prime time is better than Rurik Thar. Uh, call me crazy. I mean, it's probably wrong, right? Like, citing out the namesake card is probably just wrong. Uh, but that's what I would do were I in Dean's seat right now. I'd side out one to two. I'd side out the walking blister for sure. I'd probably like trim an Azusa or two on the play, on the draw, excuse me. Uh, it, it does get hard to sideboard with this deck. You could like cut the Colony Garden very easily. You don't need chump blockers in this matchup. Uh, and yeah, I'd probably cut like two Primeval Titan. That's six cuts. Uh, problem is, you just have so many cards to side in. You have Rurkthar, you have two Relic, you have Spell Pierce, you have a Brave that's probably better than a lot of cards. So maybe it's you side out four Azusa, three Azusa. I'll certainly have to ask my friend Tito, who is a uh, amulet player for quite a while now.
and this has got to go to a game three here. Fastman there, Dean Champagne there. It's never a good feeling. It always feels so damn bad when you have the record to top eight, right? You're at table six. You see tables one through four draw in. No, sorry, these guys are at table five. They see tables one through four draw in. They know that some of those players probably drew in incorrectly, too. And they know that, damn it, we have the record to top eight, but we have to play it out. This is ridiculous. But play it out, they have to do. Um, it's their punishment for losing early, I guess. It's never a good feeling having to win that last round when everyone else was able to draw into top eight. But we as players... We know that if Swiss is six rounds, we might just have to play six rounds to get into the top eight. That's how it works. And here we go. Game three, the most important game of the tournament for both of these players. And wow. Strong case for the banning of Mox Opal right here. Look at this. Land, Pyrite, Opal, Stirrings completely sets Fastman up for this game. What a draw. It's not even like Ancient Grudge is good here. Like, it's fine. But it's too slow. Nature's claim takes out amulet. Damn! This is really impressive from Matt Fassman. Let's see what Dean chooses to do. His interaction, post-board, Spell Pierce and Braid. Neither one he can cast with a forest. A Braid, his only lands let him cast a Braid right now. Four gemstone mine. Okay, Relic. And land drop. Very weak start for Dean. He was banking on that amulet living. But Matt side in the nature's claim. It's Matt's turn three. He could just go off right now. Will he make an attempt? Let's take a look at Matt. minutes left for these players should be enough unless we get into some kind of really weird stalemate which does seem unlikely against with these two decks Matt just trying to decide what he wants to do here he who you know there are a lot of without seeing his hand it's hard to say he ultimately decides on buried ruin clearly doesn't have a KCI right I mean you'd think he would go for it but 
Oh, oh, okay, never mind. Here we go. Four mana. This is turn three, by the way. He has Ancient Stirrings. He has killed a permanent. And he just cast a four drop on turn three and is going to go off. On turn three on the play. And here's the judge call. An extra card was looked at. Unless Matt Fassman has done this like two or three other times in the tournament. Shouldn't really matter. So that's the card he should have drawn. He, he'll draw that. They'll randomize the rest of the deck. Minus the four cards from Ancient Stirrings. And Matt Fassman will ultimately get a warning. No game integrity rules were breached, right? Like, Matt Fassman got no advantage from seeing that card. Uh, there was, there's no question that he possibly could have cheated. Right, like the card didn't touch his hand. The card didn't go under the table. Nothing happened. Pretty clearly a mistake. So in recent years, it's gotten much more lenient. It's possible that something like this could even be a game loss in previous times. But just gonna be a warning here. card goes on top, he draws that card, and he gets a warning. Not a big deal. The only thing we know is that Mox Opal is in Matt's hand. Mox Opal. Taps for green, gets sacked for two. Fassman going to try and demonstrate some loops here. Here we go. Mindstone. Spellbound. Fassman taking it slow. He knows there's plenty of time on the clock. And this is the most important turn of the game. He can afford to take it slow. I was playing a Star City Open uh, team event a few weekends ago. And uh, our blue-white control player... Played against KCI multiple times, and multiple times KCI did go to time. Because it's a technical matchup, the KCI player thought for a really long time. Tried to go off very methodically and slowly. And there just wasn't enough time. Not going to be the case here. Plenty of time left. As we see, Inventor's Fair gets popped. What's he going to go find? Will it be a mirror Retriever? I think it will. Have I mentioned that this is turn three on the play? Dean has two permanents. There he is. There's the mirror dad. No mana left.
And this, I believe, is the loop that Matt demonstrated last game, but instead of a star, it's the pyrite spell bomb. All she wrote for Dean Champagne, who's getting combinationed here on turn three. Very infrequently, I wish we had table mics uh, at this tournament series, but this is one of those times. I want to hear Matt describe this loop. Because there's not a chance in hell I describe it as well as Matt does. On the outer tables, by the way. Cluster around Ryan Leverone's match in his Hardened Scales deck as Dean scoops him up. Ah, I do feel for Dean. Go 4 1, think you might get to draw in, have to play it out, play against a fellow combo deck. Perhaps misplay game one with the amulet. And in game three, you just get nut drawn. That'll happen. Mox Opal and Ancient Stirrings, the two most powerful cards in the KCI deck by far. Matt Fassman had them both on turn one, and that did it. As we see how Matt sideboarded here. Three Nature's Claim, two Silence. Seems pretty good to me. You don't want four Nature's Claim. I really want to see what he boarded out. Sphere, 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 Mirror Retriever, Terrarian. Okay. Man, I keep expecting Matt Fassman to have, like, a less pimp version of a certain card, but, like, every version is just the best. He even has the Urza's Legacy Defense Grid. Like a true G. I think on that basis alone, I'm rooting for him to win this tournament. You see how Dean's sideboard. Pierce, 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 Braid, Braid, Braid. Rurikthar, Relic. It didn't even want the last Relic. Wow. Okay. Left a Relic in the board. Crook Clan Ironworks. A pretty strong argument to main deck Rurikthar and Amulet. That's for sure. There's only one in the room today, but in a highly competitive tournament, like, say, at the upcoming Pro Tour, I would expect a lot of KCI. So if I played Amulet Titan, I would 100% main deck or Rikthar. So congrats to Matt Fassman. Locks up our fourth... Known slot in top eight. Joining Ed Hinton, Keith Rong, and Adam Snook. Very nice. So we have humans as a lock. We have Green Tron as a lock. We have Hollow One as a lock. We have KCI as locked in. After that, it is very hard to say. Almost no. Okay, I saw I saw Cheerios walking around. He's locked. He drew. 
uh, the footsteps of the Goryeo Protean Hulk deck. Not sure what to call that. Anyone know what to call the Protean Hulk deck? It has to be some fancy breakfast cereal name. And at that point, it's a toss-up between Arnie Kester, Aaron O'Gorman, Sam Labossiere. Not really sure. But that was, I think, the last match. So we will soon have standings for top eight. We're going to have deck lists for you in a couple days. We're going to have a top eight profile picture on Facebook very soon. So if you are friends with these players, uh, help me out and tag them because I'm not friends with some of these guys on Facebook. Not friends with Noah. Uh, not friends um, with Matt Fassman. So when I post this top eight picture with all eight of them uh, to the TJ Collectibles uh, Titanium Series Facebook page, please tag your friends. I'm looking at you, XZ. Tag Matt for me. All right, guys. So I'm going to go confer with the judges, get final standings. I will be back. Very.